Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dhere Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games that I played a few hours back. Now it started off with b3, open trying to feign get the bishop early on to b2 uh, and I went with c6, d5 as always. Open plays bishop b2, I went with d5. Open gets the knight out onto f3 and I develop my bishop onto f5. Uh, and then d3, just trying to make sure that there's no attack on to c2 further. And then I played e6, opponent plays e3, trying to develop the bishop and castle on the king's side next uh, with most likely ideas. Uh, and then I went with knight f6 because I cannot develop the bishop early. I lose the pawn straight away. That's the advantage of Fian Keda bishop early, uh, doing that early. Uh, and then after bishop to e2, I went with knight d7, connecting both my knights. And now opponent offered the knight, which I should have taken, but I instead went with uh, bishop d6. Opponent takes on the knight, and I take back with the queen. Uh, and here opponent plays a knight to d2. Now, before we continue with this game further, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without a miss. Here I played queen e7 and opponent plays h3, preparing to play maybe g4 or maybe prevailing to castle. Either of them is about to happen. I castle, my opponent plays a4, trying to go for now pushing the pawns on the queen, queen side. I went with a6. Uh, my opponent plays bishop to f3 and I went with bishop b4, hitting the knight. Uh, and open castles here, and I get my bishop back onto g6. Now, the game is pretty equal till here. Uh, slight advantage to black with the given structure. Uh, this is a very good castle, I would say, for the king. Uh, lots of safety pieces involved. My bishop is active there. Uh, have to get my rook onto the c file, maybe, which or whichever file I am willing to break open. Here, bishop goes back, and I get my rook to c8. Open uh, plays pawn forward, kicking my bishop backwards, and it comes to d6 now. And then b4 by opponent, trying to maybe break open the structure from there. And now queen to c7, trying to line up this beautiful diagonal towards the king. And here open plays d4 finally. Uh, now this is bad actually because you are putting your bishop uh, pawns in front of your own bishop. And the bishop would become more inactive, and that's the only thing which is happening right now. I got my other rook into the picture as well, rook e8. Uh, and then uh, I was offered bishop that can be taken with my knight. But instead I went uh, for removing uh, my uh, rook from the c file because I'm now willing to play pawn forward and break open the center with bishop taking next. Uh, here, uh, open goes back with bishop f3 and I went with pawn to e5 trying to break open the center. And opponent also gets rook to e1. Now I was confused here for, for some little bit time that I should take here or I should just proceed the pawn further. Proceeding also makes sense because it closes the structure completely. Uh, and then opponent will have to do something to break out things open. Bishop goes back. And then I went with queen e7. Opponent tries to just sidestep the king. I got my bishop back. Opponent repeats. And that's why I got my queen to d6. There was slight maneuvering where I just exchanged my PC's position so that now I'm going for a checkmate attack. And that's why I opened sword and then played knight f1. Now knight f1 prevents checkmate, but then now it, it, it is a guarantee that the knight will have to stay there for a longer period of time trying to safeguard the king there. I went with knight d7 and opponent plays bishop to a3 uh, with the idea of playing pawn forward next. And I just sidestep from the harm's way. Open still plays uh, b5. And I capture here. And after opponent takes, I push the pawn forward. Now I can take and let my opponent's bishop come into the attack. But why so? If I place a5 and then I'm able to play b6, that would be a close structure from the queen side as well. That's what happens eventually. Open plays bishop h5 and I play b6, letting the opponent take. He takes and I take back with the queen. And now queen comes to g4. Now I thought of analyzing my queen's position as well. And what do I get if I trade the queen? Uh, if I save the queen, my queen would become passive, I would say. I cannot go here or here. Both the squares are controlled with pawn and bishop respectively. 
uh, I cannot come on to e6 as well because my opponent will take. If I go with queen to f6, I'm blocking my knight's path and queen h6 would be very passive. Th that all options I have, but that's it. So instead, I thought I'll take and spoil my pawns, uh, my opponent's pawn structure. And then I went with knight f6, hitting the pawn, which gets saved by playing f3. I take on the pawn, opponent takes back, and then I went with rook e6, trying to do the rook left, open, uh, and then open plays king g2, and I get my knight back, and then maneuver uh, my other rook as well, doubling up in the center file, which open saves with the knight, and I play h6 next. Uh, rook to a2 by opponent, and I went with f5, trying, giving away the pawn, and then getting my rook onto f6, open plays pawn forward, and I take the pawn, opponent takes back. I take on the pawn here because my opponent, if now takes, which does happen in the game as well, I can take the rook as well. So this is completely kind of equal. Uh, you can say uh, opponent has got the extra center pawn, but I have pawns on the on both sides of the board, which is very critical when you are going for an end game. Um, that can be used as a deflection technique, and then you can deflect your opponent's king to one of the side of the board and push the other. So I evaluated all that and then thought I can now go for exchanges. Then rook comes here. I try to maneuver my knight, um, then giving a check with the rook, and then uh, sidestepping onto h1 with the idea of then giving a check and then uh, swinging over to the other side of the board. The uh, knight comes on to e4, uh, about to go for a fork. Uh, and opponent saw that coming and saves, uh, and then I get my rook onto the h1. Uh, king comes on to d3, hitting my knight. Knight goes to uh, g3 now, hitting the rook. Rook attacks my knight, and I sidestep now on to h6. Sorry, h5 there. And after d5, I had this lovely fork, which I was waiting all the time. I was trying to create the other side of the board. I was waiting for this as well. Somehow skipped from my mind at the last moment, and I missed it. So knight f6 now missing the fork and pawn gets pushed further on to d6 i have to save the bishop so bishop d8 uh, still trying to hang on uh, to my pawn in the knight with the bishop as well now pawn forward c4 by opponent and i get my knight back hoping that my, maybe my opponent will not see again and i can give a fork this time <laughs> but it was too late opponent saw that coming this time and places rook uh, the king on to e4 and I then uh, get my rook onto a1, attacking the bishop, which goes back. And I now try, try to pin the bishop there. Bishop goes up, and I take on the rook. Opponent takes back with the knight. If you see here, white is ahead in the game, uh, simply because there are too many pawns here uh, to counterattack uh, and win. So I thought of just uh, push, removing my knight from there, from the corner, and start advancing my pawns as well to create pressure. So knight h uh, to g3, uh, attacking the king, which gets me a pawn and that attacks the bishop as well. Bishop gets saved, but then I can move my king to the center. Gives me time to gain, come back into the center. King f7, and then once king is pushed further, I go to king with king e6, defending my knight. And suddenly, if you see, in, in span of two moves, I went from minus 1.2 to 4.9, 5.1, in fact in a span of two moves, simply because my king is more centralized now. I can take control of this. Uh, even the pawn structure uh, can handle now uh, with the support of the king. So I'm pretty good here. After this, knight comes on to e3, hoping for knight exchange. Uh, and I can push my pawn forward. That's what I do. I kick the king backwards. Now, oh, I should have taken the knight. I took on the pawn. I was trying to eliminate the threats. And I think I was lying behind on time as well. Yes. 22 versus 28 so very less time there to think that i could have gone got an extra piece there so i took on opponent takes back as well uh, knight comes in with a check but i go to c5 about to take a pawn open takes i take as well open comes back and i just take another pawn and then push my pawns further i leave my bishop hanging into dry i can save it as well but i thought i'd rather push for uh, the pawn and promote as soon as possible and that was the final hope. My opponent saves it and then sacks away the knight for the uh, queen. And then I have two pawns. Both are in separate directions, B and G. 
uh, and the lone king cannot do everything so i just push and then i got the queen on the board uh, but i didn't have much time remaining with the time pressure i tried to cut down on the ranks and files for the opponent uh, but I couldn't checkmate eventually because of lack of, lack of time. My time ran out. Uh, had I seen that, I was winning the extra piece. Maybe I could have won faster. And the uh, results of the game could have been different on paper as well. Uh, but I would take this uh, as well because I know I was winning. It was a winning position. And that's what matters when you're playing Blitz. Focus on uh, the position more than time. That's what I was trying to do, and I hope it was fun for you to watch and learn the end game as well, how to trade when, and how to make sure that you have pawn structure pawns on both sides of the board, and use one of them to deflect the opponent and then promote from the other. Uh, apart from that, the middle game was complex as well. Uh, I missed a fork once. I missed a couple of things, uh, but then. Eventually, I was still winning despite all that, uh, and I was playing a much stronger opponent uh, as compared to my rating as well. So I hope you like the video. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now, and I shall see you tomorrow again with some interesting content. Thanks for time. Take care. Bye-bye.